Hello everyone, this is the first in my capital budgeting series designed for those learning this corporate financial concept for the first time. Now capital budgeting is the investment decision process for long-term capital projects. These are projects we typically refer in accounting as PPE, property plans and equipment with a longevity in excess of a year and the process for deciding on these projects requires that we first determine how much it'll cost to invest in the project and secondly estimate how much money we expect to earn over the course of the project thirdly um, estimate the cost of capital appropriate for the project. The cost of capital the easiest is going to be the interest rate on debt but as you know a lot of times projects are financed using a combination of debt and equity and so in that respect we're going to have to estimate the weighted average cost of the debt and equity capital that will be invested in the project. And then finally w with all those in place make a decision as to whether the project should be accepted or not. Now this last point is what this presentation is about and it requires that we utilize one or more investment decision techniques to make the decision to accept or reject. The first of these techniques discussed here is the payback period which is the simplest capital uh, budgeting method as it simply calculates the number of years as you see right here it takes to recover the cost of the project and so the decision rule here is going to be to accept a project if the payback period is less than the threshold established by the firm. The threshold is going to be the maximum cost recovery time that the firm has decided on. And so without further ado I'm going to show you a quick example. Here are two projects A and B and they these are five-year projects so both projects will cost five thousand dollars for a we expect to earn these cash flows over the next five years and these are going to be the cash flows for B so if you wanted to determine the payback period for a it's pretty linear because you know it'll cost us five grand here and in the first two years as you can see here we're already going to be picking up the five grand and so the payback period for a is going to be two years for B though, observe that in the first three years we'll, we only would have picked up 3900 bucks. We still left um, with a 1100 to pay back. However, by the fourth year we would have picked up a total of 6100 bucks when we add in this 2200 right here, which is more than the payback. And so we know that the payback is going to be between three years and four years. To exactly calculate this, we're going to say, well, the payback period here is going to be three years and some change alright and how do we get this remainder it's gonna be well what's left to pick up after the first three years and what's left is gonna be this eleven hundred bucks which is gonna come out of this next cash flow right here this twenty two hundred so that's how we determine the fractional year so the fraction here is 0.5 added to three we have a payback period an exact payback period of three point five years and so now what if these projects are independent? How are we going to choose? Well, independent projects means that the two have nothing in common. Say a firm is considering purchasing a truck and separately the firm is considering investing in a warehouse. So that's your A and B. They are independent and so what we're going to do is to accept any project in so far as the payback period is below that threshold. So if the firm has a threshold of four years saying hey we're going to accept any uh, capital project with a payback of below four then of course these two projects are going to be accepted if in fact the firm says we're only going to accept projects with a payback of less than two less than two well none of these will fit the bill now though if uh, if it's anything if the projects are mutually exclusive then it means that we're gonna to have to choose one and dump the other so this is a case where for example the firm is considering buying a truck uh, made by Ford and a similar truck made by General Motors so the the firm only needs one truck and so these two trucks are going to be mutually exclusive only one is going to be accepted and the one that definitely should be accepted is going to be the one with a shorter payback period because that's why the firm is using payback to analyze them 
and so this would be accepted in so far as again it meets the basic criterion which is uh, to accept a project with payback period below the threshold established by the firm so now but this choice now based on the payback period reveals one of the weaknesses of this technique because as you can see the payback period disregards cash flows occurring beyond the payback so that by choosing A over B if they are mutually exclusive you can see for yourself that we do have some pretty attractive pretty tantalizing cash flows coming coming out later for project B so that definitely is a weakness and secondly also you can see that the payback period ignores time value of money which is the point that I make right here the second point though can be uh, fixed by ch choosing to utilize the discounted payback period so the discounted payback period will instead discount all of these cash flows meaning find the present value of all of these cash flows so like for project A these are the cash flows this is the timeline right here so this 4000 will have to be discounted over one period at the cost of capital of 12 percent if you do that it's gonna come out to be 3571 this 1000 will be discounted over two years okay back to this point from here to here and that at 12 percent and that's gonna give us 797 and the beat goes on so here I've shown you an example for this 1900 for project B occurring in the third year you can see the uh, old-school present value calculation right here which produces this present value of 1352 so calculating payback period therefore will now be based not on the original undiscounted values but rather on these blue columns which contain the discounted values and when you do that um, the calculation manual calculation is right here you'll find that the discounted payback for A is 3.16 years and for B it's 4.43 years as I demonstrate right here we can also pretty quickly use the BA2 plus to calculate the payback and discounted payback period and I'm gonna show it up right now for project A well um, so right here that's my BA2 plus and it's gonna be the professional version right the basic student version doesn't have the added feature for calculating payback and discounted payback so here we go I'm gonna clear the screen alright and then second clear work clear TV and second clear work alright this is a ritual that you must perform anyhow when cash flows as dissimilar like in this case here's our cash flow register so you click on it and then after you click on it one more time second clear work why did we hit second before clear work because clear work right here on the bottom of the calculator is a second function alright so now it prompts us to enter the initial cash flow which is 5000 alright so I type in 5000 keep in mind it's a negative cash flow so hit this plus minus key here and then hit enter alright so we've entered it so we scroll down alright you can see the prompts right here we scroll down for C1 which is first cash flow it's 4000 type it in and then enter scroll down for bypass the frequencies for C2 it's 1000 enter scroll to C3 C3 is 800 800 enter scroll to C4 which is 600 enter and then scroll to the final one C5 is 300 all right enter if you think you might have made an error just use your scroller your error down and scroll through and review all your entries and you can stop at any point and then you're gonna have to do this first click on NPV and then it prompts you for the cost of capital type 12 all right 12 and enter all right as I show right here and then scroll down all right and then it prompts you for NPV go ahead and calculate it anyhow even though that's not really what, what we want right now so to compute hit this CPT key all right that's your NPV scroll down one more time it prompts you for N NFV which is net future value we don't really need that nevertheless we're gonna have to bypass that hurdle by hitting compute all right and then scroll down again now this is what we want payback so hit compute and that's two right there all right and then scroll down again we have this discounted payback hit compute again compute 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we get, 3.16 years. And so that's all there is to it. And right here is a pr is practice for you. So in this example, you have uh, an initial cost of 1200 bucks, and then these are the cash flows. And as you can see already, um, we do have uh, the first two years producing nine, 900, and uh, but the first three years, it's more than the cost you're gonna get 1260 so you're gonna to have to figure out how much more money you have left after the first two years which actually here is what it is 300 which is gonna come out of this 360 and that's gonna give you the fractional year alright and if you want to you can also use the financial calculator and that's it